What's up guys, Wrath is on the horizon, and I'm sure many of you are thinking about, or wor worrying about perhaps having enough gold um, for the beginning of the patch or expansion, because there's going to be tons of items to buy, crafted previous gear, leveling the correct professions to do the most damage you can, um, which means that there it's a quite a large advantage to have a large gold war chest going into Wrath. So let's look at what you can do right now to, um, to build up your gold and be pre as prepared as you possibly can for Wrath. Obviously, you can go farming. I don't personally enjoy it, so that's not what I'm going to be doing at all to make gold for Wrath, but it works. And if you like it, go ahead and do it. Um, my suggestions, well, TBC materials, they're going to be petering off, but they're, they're still going to be strong demand for pretty much everything uh, going into the final two to three weeks before Wrath launches. That has been the trend with every other uh, former expansion. Items keep selling until the very last second. Um, in addition to that, there's going to be very strong demand for classic materials um, for a couple of reasons. You have people leveling inscription from scratch or planning to do that once the pre-patch hits. And then you have people planning to level death knights. They will also need materials to level engineering, jewel crafting, the top two suggested uh, professions for, for those for that class. Um, so all of the, all of the uh, materials needed for that are good to farm because you can sell them right now. They're selling well. Classic materials are almost always selling well. Um, and they have the potential to see some pretty substantial price increases um, in the final run-up to uh, to the pre-patch and, and wrath. Now, oh, the orcs now, that's where I want to be making my gold. And as you can see here, I'm already uh, putting some work in on it. Uh, this is my material flipping character, my favorite beginner gold making mar marketing classic of all time. I have another video on it, it's in the video description for anyone looking to understand what this market is. Uh, but it's great. Players have started buying materials to level professions already. Uh, I'm personally stacking up. I've spent like 4,000 gold over the last week buying materials because I'm leveling a ton of professions um, for Wrath. Uh, and that's going to cause some streaky buying patterns, which is absolutely perfect for flipping. Uh, and there's also for certain material groups, particularly herbs for inscription, ores and gems for engineering and jewel crafting and potentially enchant, uh, dust for enchanting, there's a potential for significant price increases um, for the final uh, as we approach the pre-patch and during the pre-patch. Um, because we might see a lot of people come back into the game and decide to level their professions at that time. Um, enchanting, for the record, the reason why I include enchanting is because enchanting is going to be a lot better in Wrath from a gold making perspective because you can finally enchant Vellums and sell your enchants. Which means that uh, people who don't, don't have the time to spend all day sitting in uh, Orgrimmar or whatever to sell their enchants to people meeting up, uh, they're now going to want to get into that. So um, yeah, that's a, a great one. And as you can see, we have some Vision Dust sales here. I have a bunch of Mountain Silver Sage, Herbs, whatever. Um, I just started buying again. I haven't been buying for a while, so I'm sort of low on materials, but this works great. In addition to just material flipping, crafting professions still offer a lot of profit potential. There's still people playing the game, they're raiding, they're gearing alts, they're doing whatever that you can do in World of Warcraft. That's always gonna happen. Even if you are at the tail end of an expansion, we're not really at the complete tail end yet either. Even though many players are finished with their main progression goals, they're still playing the game and still optimizing their characters. As you can see here, I just opened my Jewel Crafter. A lot of the meta gems are selling for uh, pretty decent profits here. Um, this varies a bit throughout the week. This is a, a big meme. Um, you can see that some of the rare gems are selling for profits relative to the raw gems, and then you can probably make gold with prospecting. Um, so that's going to be the same case for consumables, for bags. We just open tailoring. We'll see that the bags here are just absolutely wild right now. Um, the bracers to have not profitable right now, but there's a lot of potential in professions. Just open your professions. Even pre-raid crafted gear. I sold a pair of bracers of havoc the other week. But I collected the sale on my other <laughs> on my other computer, so it didn't show up here. Uh, but this this still sells. It all still sells. Um, so utilize your professions. Any recipes you have that were was good in the past is probably going to still be good for a while. I also have one method that's sort of in between material flipping and crafting. We're talking about enchanting shuffles. It deserves its whole different paragraph. It's very good. Um, there are a couple of recipes you want to look out for. Um, the nether we've built for arcane dust. Arcane dust has been going down in price a little bit. Uh, but this is the main recipe to to use for that. Right now it's not profitable. We can see that the disenchant value is 2 gold 71 and the crafting cost is 3 gold. Uh, so just barely going to lose a little bit of gold. 
Uh, but there's going to be a ton of people leveling classic enchanting, as I said. Uh, and there are some good recipes for that. You are looking for the rune cloth belt. This one you can use to shuffle dream dust, which is one of the dust you need the most of. Um, this will give you two and a half dream dust per on average. You can see right now the disenchant value is two gold, 15 silver, uh, with a crafting cost of one gold and 53 silver. So that's 65 silver profit on average per belt. Um, you craft and disenchant. So that's uh, pretty sizable. That's a large percentage gain. So that's very nice. And then you have another one, the White Bandit Mask, right here. Um, this is for Vision Dust and Nether Essences. And um, you get this recipe off the auction house. The Rune Cloth Belt is from the trainer. Craft them, disenchant them, double check if the prizes are profitable. You can just use the disenchant value in the TSM tooltip to get the very quick idea of is this worth it or not. Just compare that to the crafting cost and you're good to go. Lastly, we can't really avoid this, the GDKPs. If you have gear, if you're a raider and you can get into GDKPs as like a, with a, a pumper status and not an expectation to buy, or even if you can get away with spending not that much, you have the potential to make some sizable gold with GDKPs. Um, I haven't personally been in any because I don't really play the TBC endgame. Um, there's a lot of reasons to dislike GDKPs from the perspective of real money trading and what they enable. Uh, but if you're truly trying to optimize, then it's hard to uh, hard to avoid considering them and even joining them. Uh, because as always in World of Warcraft, what people want to spend the absolute most gold on is super high-end gear, best in slot gear. That's always what they're most willing to spend gold on, and GDKP runs as a way to to make money off of high-level gear from other players. The absolute best way to make gold. Uh, so that's also something that you can do, um, and probably blows most of the other things out of the water, particularly if you're already raiding. Um, I didn't touch on boosting and certain other specific uh, gold-making methods. Um, they're under the heading of farming. You can do all of that as well. Um, if you have the character and have learned them, but it's a lot, it's pretty hard to get into. So I focus on stuff that's easier to get into with material flipping, crafting professions, enchanting shuffles. All of this is stuff that you can very easily get started by yourself. Um, so that's it. Um, that's what I'll be doing. I'll personally be focusing on material flipping and using my crafting professions, Pro possibly some enchanting shuffles, depending how much time I have. Uh, that's my plan for generating some extra gold before Wrath. What's yours? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.